right, you finished your manual J load calculation and you wanna select the right size furnace. How big is too big? Welcome back, I'm Chris Morin with HVAC Pro Blog, and this week we're gonna talk about how big is too big when it comes to a fossil fuel furnace. Obviously, when you're selecting the furnace, you need to take a look at the net output of the furnace and make sure it at least meets the heat loss of the home. That's why you have to do a load calculation first. Even if you were to consider changing like for like, I think what you're gonna find is if you're replacing an old furnace, somebody has probably changed the building envelope or maybe they didn't do a load calculation originally. Could have been one of those contractor specials. What I find a lot of times are people will change the furnace out for the same net BTUs, but they forget they're taking an inefficient furnace out and putting a high efficient furnace in, which typically needs more volume of air, and they run into trouble with the duct system. It's not that the ducts were undersized, it's that they were sized for the old furnace. You need to do the math and make sure it's going to work. And what I usually like to see is this furnace being downsized because you do a load calculation and the heat gain is way less than you thought because of simple upgrades like air sealing and insulation. Never mind windows or all the other things that can decrease the heat loss. So that's pretty cut and dry, right? You need to meet the heat loss of the home. That's the minimum size, but how big is too big? It doesn't matter if it's a single stage, two stage, variable speed furnace. There is a maximum for design when you talk about ACA Manual S. When you're selecting a fossil fuel furnace, this would apply to natural gas, propane, and even oil. Your max net output should not be more than 40% above the heat gain of the home. So that output of the furnace can be within 100% of the heat loss to up to 140% of the heat loss. With one caveat, if you need to get a larger drive furnace because you need the airflow for air conditioning, they'll let you go as big as two times the heat loss. There is nothing good by making a furnace twice the size it needs to be though, particularly in a heating dominated climate. If you were to do this, I'm willing to bet a high efficient furnace may never actually condense. It's gonna short cycle so much, it's never gonna reach what it needs, and variable capacity is not the silver bullet. It can only ramp down so far. So what happens on the 98% of the time when we're below our design load. Gotta remember that. Also, how comfortable is that gonna be for the homeowner? Big temperature swings all year round. And don't forget, we're gonna use more KWH with the system starting up, that inducer motor turning on, the fan motor turning on and running to reject that heat into the home and overheating those spaces. So nothing good by oversizing the furnace. Stay below the recommended 140% of your heat loss. Thanks for joining me this week at HVAC Pro Blog, where we provide advice for residential system design, quality installation, and system diagnosis. I'll see you soon.